This video is brought to you by Great Escape Games, Sacramento's premier game store. What is up you guys? Swahili here with Guys Playing Games, and we're going to talk about Treasure Hunter by Richard Garfield. This is a really easy game to set up, lots of fun, and the whole point of this game is to earn money. We got a ton of coin cards, coin tokens that we're trying to earn throughout the game. The person with the mo most co coins at the end of the game wins. So here is our board, very simple, easy to set up. We have it divided into four different realms, and we keep track of what round we are on over here. And it, each game is a total of five rounds, and we move the co token down according to the round we're on. Um, the the three different realm, the four different realms we have are always played in the same order. First, we start in the Frosty Mountain, then we move to the Tangled Jungle, and onto our Lava Cave. At the end of those three, we finish with our Goblin Fight in the Goblin Cave. To begin our setup, we're going to take our treasure tokens, which look like this, and we'll put them in two equal piles somewhere on the table, and we're going to be putting them down on our max and our min of each of our three realms. There are many different types of treasure tokens. For example, this is just a simple, you earn 10 coins if you win this one. There's also um, yellow scroll cards, and um, each one has a different ability. We can get into detail on those later. And we also have artifacts, and they're worth either positive or negative coins, so you want to pay attention and not accidentally win something bad. So we put all of those face up on the max and the mins of each of our realms. Once we've done that, we move on to the goblin cave, and we have our pile of goblin cards. Each goblin card has a strength value and a steel value. So this one is strength level 1, and if he beats you, he's going to take one coin away from you. If you are successful in defending against a goblin, you will earn one coin for each one you defend against. So we put those down right there, face up at the beginning of the round, and now our table is set up. Now that you have the board set up, let's talk about what each player starts with. They're going to start with 15 coins, which would look like this. We have a, we have a 10, we have a 2, and we have a 3. We also start with 9 cards. And let's talk about those different types of cards um, before, we, before we get started on the gameplay. Uh, we have adventure cards, which uh, vary in value from 1 to 12, and they're a different color depending on or corresponding to the three different realms that we have. So if I have a blue, I have to use this card in the Frosty Mountain. So this one is a level 8, we got an 11, and we have a 1. The player with the biggest point value will win the max, the max treasure. The one with the lowest value will win the min treasure. And the people in the middle get no treasure. We also have action cards. These action cards do all kinds of different things. This is just an example of three of, of some of the cards that, uh, action cards that we have. Um, this is an animal companion card. This one will multiply the point value of your entire uh, adventure team for that round. So let's say I had three blue cards totaling a value of 20. This one would make that a value of 40. This is a Scare Goblin card, and this card makes you immune from the goblin attack for that round. Very powerful. This is called the Sleeping Beauty card, action card, and it will negate the value of any one of your action cards. So this will make um, this card a, from a one, make it a zero. We also have dogs. That's right, we have dog cards, and these cards are essential for protecting you from the goblin attack. So we have our goblin, car, our goblin card, which is a value of two. This dog is a value of one. So unfortunately, he will not protect you from this guy, but he will protect you from any equal or lesser value. So this is a level one, and he will protect you from that, and you'll get one card, or you'll get one coin from that attack. And last but not least, we have our coin cards. Our coin cards are worth different amounts, and we put them down at the end of each round, and we get that corresponding amount back for our treasure, which is the whole point of this game, is getting treasure. Now that we have our board set up and we kind of know what cards to expect, let's talk about the beginning of each round. We're going to start with nine cards each. Don't get excited, these cards are not yours to keep yet. You only get to pick one card, put it down, and you take the remaining eight and move it to your right. 
um, the next round you're going to move those cards to your left as indicated on our adventure board. So I take the remaining eight cards from the person from my left now and I take my favorite card from there. So now I have two, there's only seven left, and I move that to the right. I keep doing this until I have nine cards, kind of of my choosing, in my hand. Once that's done, we're going to start in the Frosty Mountain, and I'll put down all of my blue adventure cards. We'll see who wins the max, who wins the min, and we keep going through to the Tangled Jungle and the Lava Cave. Once that's done, we have the Goblin Attack. And if I have any dogs, if I have any action cards I want to use, we put those down, see who is def successfully defended against the goblins, and who is going to lose some money. Once that's done, we count up our money, and then we move to the next round. It's important to note that you can only use the yellow um, magic scroll car uh, tokens um, once during the game. If you do not use it, uh, by the fifth round, then you cannot ever use it. So it's important to get that done if you want to earn the treasure for that token. Let's talk a little bit more about the dog dynamic in this game. Now we use our dogs to defend against the goblins. Let's say we have two players, each with... We have two players, each with a total of two paw power. Now they're both successful in defending against the goblins, but they need to, but we decide who wins the coins from the goblins based on this number here on the bottom, which is called the dog discipline. Now this dog discipline is level nine, and for our our other player, he only has a total of five. So although he has two cards, this player will win the goblin tokens um, for that round because he has a higher dog discipline. It's important to note that at the beginning of each round, you must put down all of your adventurer cards. Um, so I have three blue cards. I have to put all three of them down once we're in the Frosty Mountain. However, I do not have to put down all of my action cards at the big, er, at e during each round. Um, I can either choose not to put them down if it's beneficial to me, or I can put all of them down. That's entirely up to you. Let's talk about what happens if there's a tie when competing for the minimum treasure. So we have two players here, one is an 11, and one is also an 11 because he used a Sleeping Beauty action card on his 12, bringing it from 23 down to 11. The card, or the player that had the most points, even with this card here, would win the minimum. Thank you guys for joining us in this video. Hopefully you know a little bit more about Treasure Hunter, and be sure to pick it up at your local game store. Thanks.